Hello everyone. Welcome to the June edition of Horizon Video Zine. I am Akshay Bhagwat from the Technicals and Derivatives Desk. Well, uh, as we talk and shoot this video, the good news is that the markets were on the verge of hitting the all-time high levels. Well, it's uh, been a highly volatile few days for the market. And if you look at the turbulence which we have seen lately in the Nifty index, it was mainly the political changes, the election outcome, which kept the market participants on the edge of the seat. Now, clearly, if you look at the positioning ahead of the election outcome, if we do, do a quick recap of how things fared in the past three to four days, uh, clearly the markets were heavily positioned as per the exit polls, which clearly gave a verdict for the BJP-led NDA government to clearly cross the 400 plus mark. Well, the street was in for a surprise and the election outcome day really was more of a massacre for the bulls in the initial part of the trading day. Well, that's uh, behind our back right now. And as we see today, post the heavy volatility which we have seen in the last three to four trading sessions, we are back at the all time high levels. Now, one of the key developments here, when we look at what happened, the FIIs were actually very pessimistic on how we, they started off the June series. The long short ratio, which uh, we very keenly track in the index future segment, was as low as 11%. Uh, you can say uh, long positions compared to around 89% shorts. So that's a pretty strong uh, way to start the series for the June month on a very short note or a sell mode for the FIS. So clearly the FIS were very not keen on participating in a big way because somewhere or the other, you know, it feels that they were not very keen on taking a very strong bullish bet ahead of such a major mega event which happens once in five years. Now, uh, one more important uh, parameter which we always discuss when such big events are lined up is the volatility index. You might be surprised to know that volatility index which historically crashes post the event, it did take a very massive upside, almost 31% uh, from the 2021% on the election day. So that was in for a surprise. The option writers really had a hard day on the election outcome. Uh, but finally, now, as I may put it, everything is behind their back. Well, sanity returns back to the system. The uh, normalcy is back. And I'm, as I may put it, a che din wapas a gaye hai. So uh, to take it ahead uh, now what we look at is before we see how the markets are positioned from here we will do a quick chart check of how the international markets are placed on the price graphs. So if you look at the Dow Jones uh, 30 index, uh, it's broadly in a very strong uptrend. It's just that the last couple of months have seen a bit of uh, a consolidative phase. So if I were to look at levels on that index, it is the 38,000 support and the 40,000 resistance. This is the range in which the Dow Jones has been confined in. And again, recently we did see a good uh, bounce from the 38,000 support zone. So the belief is still 38,000 is held. Really, you have no reason or concern to be worried about how the US is faring, at least from the market's perspective. Also, if you look at the crude oil, it is uh, well very much in a range, kind of it's cooled off a bit to $75 uh, dollars or level and even the 10 year US yields which we commonly track uh, for the health of the broader global markets is uh, around the 4.3 percent mark. So everything looks uh, pretty much under control as we step forward into the June series. Now uh, uh, before we take a quick uh, technical and derivative check as to how the positioning is for the Indian markets, uh, one thing is we would like to see how the participant wise open interest is positioned in the derivative segment and also on the cash market side. Now uh, one caution or uh, which we would advise here is FII still are broadly short on the Indian markets or are very lightly positioned. Now if you look at the cash figures month on month, I think it is uh, the uh, second consecutive month in the cash segment where the buying numbers are not getting in. There is a lot of outflow in the uh, cash segment, especially from the FII side. And things also don't look uh, much bright from the futures and option side, where the long shot
one-shot ratio, uh, although we started from around 11%, as I mentioned, it's improved slightly at 17%. So the good question, big question, I may rather put it, going ahead is, with the Nifty almost at the verge of hitting all-time high, do FIIs improve their long bets on the Indian markets or not? Do they come back in a big way? That's a multi-million million dollar question which uh, all the market participants would be keenly following too. So we'll keep you updated and posted on how this data plays out because it's a very important data point we would like to follow as we move ahead. Now, uh, you, you'd be surprised to know that uh, in this entire market uh, momentum or uh, the loss of momentum, rather I may put it in the last couple of days, clients have held on very strongly to their long bets in the index future segment as well as in the stock future segment. So somehow, you know, the, the client's side of the market or the participant wise positioning is very broadly placed on the buy side of the markets and if you look at the kind of momentum the market has regained in the last two days clearly the clients have been on the right side of the market so that's a very important point, point that clients have possibly got the edge over the FIIs in the last two to three trading sessions now uh, moving on as to the how the technical or the te graphs look how healthy is the market on the graphs of the nifty index which uh, uh, i would be taking you through now uh, nifty index had a very choppy session in the last three days especially in the beginning of the month but uh, the good part is that uh, time and again it's bounced from important moving average support levels now uh, you know some moving average supports which as an investor or a slightly positional trader which you need to be keenly keeping a tab on is the 200 day moving average roughly it uh, is uh, at 21,150, that's a simple moving average, I may uh, put it. Uh, the 100 day moving average, which is more of a medium term uh, outlook, is uh, roughly around 22,200, and a 50 day moving average somewhere st stays around 22,450. So, for the June series, 22,500 is somewhere where the base is building up. Now, uh, even if you kind of compare this data with how uh, the derivative segment is playing out, a lot of put writing bets now have positioned themselves at the strikes of 22,000 and 22,500. Now the good part is the volatility, volatility index has stabilized. It has got to around 15 to 16 percent from the high of 31 percent. So clearly that has meaning that stability is back in the system. The option writers are making it big now because premiums are still there. The uh, writers still have a lot of juice in the market to go for their writing bets. And uh, 22,000 and 22,500 is the strikes which the option writers are preferring to write for the June series. And that's the expectation that somewhere or the other a bottom is in place. And now market should be looking forward to conquering new landmarks. Now, where are the call writers position when we look at the derivative segment? for the nifty index the call writers are positioned at strikes of 24,000 and 24,500 so deep out of the money calls are still getting a lot of speculative long bets uh, although it is a writer's market but still considering the huge uh, price volatility which we have somewhere or the other you know it is attracting the buy side of uh, the option traders in this volatile scenario now, uh, if I would take you through how the Bank Nifty Index is set up. So Bank Nifty Index uh, 2 has recovered well. We are almost around 50,000 as we speak. And uh, although Nifty is on the verge of hitting its all-time high mark, Bank Nifty has still some more room to catch up with its all-time high numbers. So 51 thousand is one resistance which I see for the bank index but from here on if uh, the indices has to perform I think I would be more comfortable taking a bet on the banking space because there is still some more room to catch up in the bank index so uh, it's a good recovery a healthy one and uh, if I again were to see how the moving averages are placed for this uh, bank index the short term 50 day moving average which holds special relevance for the traders is positioned at the levels of 48,200. So that's the number you need to keep in my mind. That's an important support. Even if I were to kind of uh, validate this with uh, a recheck as to how the options positioning is, a lot of put writing is uh, kind of moving around 45,000, 
48,000 both for the weekly and the monthly expiries. So that does give you comfort that you know the buying demand or the support area somewhere or the other works out around the 47,000 to 48,000 mark. So till these support zones are held, expect Bank Nifty to hit its all-time high levels and further move possibly to the zone of uh, 5,300. That's uh, the projection which we have for the June series. So, so to sum it up, uh, you know, the technical health of the market is strong. It's uh, a good market, although last few uh, trading sessions have been choppy, have been volatile. It's a good market, especially for the traders, because volatility is what you look forward to as a trader. Even for an investor, his journey, although has uh, seen highs and lows in the last three days, a lot of opportunities has presented you good uh, levels to re-enter the market. Uh, one positive way I would put it is that uh, the fraud somewhere is out from the system because stocks which were highly overpriced have somewhere cooled off uh, in the last two three days and uh, really uh, it does present you a good opportunity to hunt for good names in uh, stocks where the potential from a long term or a slightly medium term uh, looks or works well for the Indian markets. Now uh, which sectors would you look, look forward to? Now, uh, clearly the way the market is, one thing which I observed here is that the PSU theme somewhere has seen a hit uh, on the election day. So uh, most of the PSU names were rather swelled up uh, on uh, huge buying interest because uh, that was the theme before the election outcome and uh, somewhere profit booking hit the PSU sector hard and when it did recover the last uh, couple of uh, trading sessions after the election outcome the recovery did not match up or live up to the expectations as some of the other sectors did. Now really which are the sectors uh, which did well in the last couple of days after the election outcome? If I were to name them it's clearly the defensive vets that's IT. Now IT traditionally in the last three months has been somewhere a subdued sector. A lot of IT names have been laggards. Uh, it was the PSUs and the uh, banking or, or the uh, Coal India or the Pale as you name it were, uh, were uh, going all guns blazing and suddenly you know uh, they had a big correction. Now all this money flow is slowly moving into these defensive names. You can uh, well uh, say that uh, IT names have seen a good recovery from their support base. Charts had been suggesting that they were on the verge of a positive reversal because they were heavily oversold considering the loss of momentum which they had and uh, now they are looking as good lucrative buying bets if you were to kind uh, position yourself in this market for the June or the July series. So a lot of IT names it would, should be on your radar. Still there is a lot of juice left in these names. Uh, even if they do see some dips that would be excellent buying opportunities to participate in this IT names and uh, that's the way ahead for the Indian markets. Secondly, uh, surprisingly I may say it is the FMCG or the uh, consumer durables which have really come out with a bang. Now because traditionally if you look at the price behavior of most of the stocks, they are known to be uh, pretty steady stocks. They have been hibernating for long as I may put it, but uh, they have come out of the blue. They have uh, kind of staged move uh, of almost 8 to 10 percent in a very short time frame of uh, uh, just a couple of days. So clearly the money is chasing these consumer durable names. So keep a watch out for uh, defensive uh, bets in case you know you are not really comfortable with the volatility in the current market. IT and FMCG is the way to go if you are slightly defensive in this current market. If you want to take a really aggressive bet, it has to be banking. Now in the banking names, we would encourage you to go for the private banking space. The PSUs really had their fair share of gain in the last couple of months and somewhere or the other we believe the mid cap to the small banking names would be the ones uh, which, which would be the beneficiaries in the next round of momentum which the bank nifty would have. So watch out uh, for the private banking space in case uh, you have a more aggressive uh, stance on the market at the given juncture. And lastly, not to forget uh, 
have the monsoon uh, basket or the monsoon theme uh, now because as we enter into the month of june a lot of uh, chemical and fertilizer names have already started uh, performing well so uh, probably it's more of uh, a cyclical uh, move which you normally see in the month of june and july so there will be a uh, lot of uh, trading interest in these names uh, from the uh, uh, the uh, the stocks which are which have uh, a significant exposure to how uh, the monsoon behaves so uh, that would be the sector which should be on your watch list now uh, uh, just to conclude uh, you know uh, i think the markets are now on a stable footing really uh, worry is behind their back now you should start adding good names to your portfolio and uh, new grounds will be conquered as we move ahead investing is the best way to approach this market sip can also be the best route considering the fact that in some volatility in choppiness you might get uh, good uh, re-entry points again in some of the sectors and uh, stocks which i mentioned uh, what uh, can be possibly uh, the events which you would like to note for for the month of june as we go ahead from here which might have some impact on the market Yes, first is uh, with the new uh, BJP government uh, back in power, they are not as strong as they were before. Uh, so they did not uh, get the majority as a standalone party. So there are some uh, glitches here and there as to how and uh, who will get the ministry. So that will kind of play on the market participants' minds for the short term. The second thing is the budget uh, in July. So depending on uh, which ministers get which kind of portfolio, so really the next uh, speculation which the market would be kind of anticipating is what will be the sops uh, which will be announced in the budget will it be uh, a populist budget or will it be more uh, uh, business friendly that will be the question mark and there is where you will have some uh, bit of volatility in the market or the uh, speculation element as we move ahead from here not to forget uh, the global concerns uh, at, at the time being at least i may put it uh, a lot of global concerns have cooled off but really here and there you have those uh, news uh, kind of you know just keeping uh, the grounds slippery on uh, the global front uh, mainly it has to be the uh, israel and the hamas conflict uh, you, you know you never know when things can escalate so that's uh, the piece of news you need to be having at the back of your mind and lastly uh, monsoon updates from the imd would uh, be keenly watched uh, because uh, that's the theme it's a cyclical theme with which the markets work on in the month of june and july so uh, keep a tab on this news flow which i discussed so uh, thanks for listening me out uh, and i wish you a happy investing times ahead from gm financial thank you investment in securities market are subject to market risks read all the related documents carefully before investing